Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. Today, we're going to take a sneak peek at Oberon Hindler, a new unit released on the JP side and a unit that will no doubt be the beginning of a huge change in War of the Visions. We're going to talk about why. For those of you waiting for the guild response video as well, that will be coming out tomorrow morning. So you're just going to have to wait a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and dig in. So there's a couple reasons that Oberon is going to completely change things up. And if you haven't been on the Reddit, you will have missed this picture posted by Koryu. It shows the active effect of King Oberon, I suppose I should call him, his TMR ability. And his TMR ability is going to affect the entire field. So this could be the beginning of buffs for the entire field. This is the beginning of being able to dispel haste for the entire field. This is the beginning of a new world in terms of TMR abilities, TMR effects, and the effectiveness of abilities overall. I'm really excited for it, and I'm kind of excited to see what's going to come out in the future. Now let's take a look at him, take a look at his stats, take a look at his abilities, and talk about why he is the unit I am most excited for in the entire game, and I'm gonna have to wait like six months to get him. First off, he is a young purple dragon king. Uh, he is the king of Hindler. If you guys aren't familiar with what Hindler is, you will learn about it shortly. Uh, he comes with Viking sub and Nightblade sub. He is a cost 100 limited uh, unit, but he is non-limited and earth element. I do think he's going to synergize really well with GL Zazan. And so if you are as excited for this unit as I am, try and get your hands on GL Zazan before he comes out. His TMR Dragon Sharp Fangs is an armor, 449 HP, 8 defense, 8 spirit, 10 critical hit rate. His ability, the Dignity of the Purple Dragon, nullify haste for enemies and decrease critical hit rate 20 for two turns to all enemies. It also increases attack 40% for himself. Being able to nullify haste is a big deal. One of the things I'm curious about is at what point this ability is procced by the AI and if the AI is going to be smart enough to actually utilize this ability. One of those things we're going to have to wait and see. His mastery ability has HP 10% for Earth allies, Earth attack 15 for Earth allies, HP 10% for himself, and single target resistance 10 for himself as well. All of this just kind of builds him up to be this incredible brawler type Dragoon that I can't wait for. Now let's take a look at his stats, his resistances, because not only are his resistances unique, but he's got some pretty good stats. You can see he has 10% resistance to slashing, 5% resistance to piercing, 15% resistance to missile. He is 10% weak to magic, but I think that's okay because he does have the single hit resistance to protect him from 100% hit attacks, and most of those are single target. Uh, we do have 10% paralysis resistance, 50% stop resistance, and he is one of the first units, if not the first unit, to actually have stun resistance. And I think this is a huge deal. And should, like, sing the praises. We need more stun resistance in this game. So shout out to that. Taking a look at his stats too. 4,300 HP, 496 attack, eight defense, 66 agility, He's going to be beefy, he's going to have attack, he's going to have HP, critical hit rate of 28. I mean, it's just all around incredible. Now, if you pair that with the fact that one of the best Earth Elemental Spears in the game is going to be released, which does have a critical form with 16% critical hit rate, Earth Attack plus 30, Pierce Attack plus 15. I mean, this is, he is going to be like a literal monster. Pair that spear with Eileen as well with him. You're going to have an earth element composition that is going to completely obliterate everything. Let's take a look at his skills. Uh, tracking. Now, tracking does say it upgrades the skill purple flying spear. And it's a little confusing down below on what this does. 
I'm gonna take a guess though, because it doesn't show a specific change in the ability, that this actually makes his jump seek on the opponent. This will also increase his acquired AP for himself, but the fact that when Purple Flying Spear is upgraded, that there's no uh, kind of description of what the upgrade does, and given the name is called tracking, I am going to guess that this does the same thing that um, Christmas Victoria's, nope, nope, Christmas Mastery's EX does, which is turns her jump into a homing jump. Now, he does also get access to HP 12% and attack 24% from Sub Viking. Then he also gets the Secret of the Dragon Spear, attack 24%, defense penetration 40. You're going to be setting that. Secret of the Blade Knight, of course, attack 30%, accuracy 25, decrease evasion rate 10, and Arrow Shield Blessing, which comes with all Viking capabilities, which increases his missile resistance. Personally, I'll probably be setting um, both of his abilities that come with his Purple Dragoon set. Now, in terms of counters, he does get Purple Dragon Sword, which is a chance to counter 20% and absorb 121% HP and it does have piercing. Of course, he does get some other things, but you are going to be setting this. That is going to be the preferred counter for him. Taking a look at his kit, his primary ability, Penetrating Spear, has a 25% chance to inflict stop. So just having that in his basic attack kit is very scary. Like, I think everybody should be scared for this. And, of course, the upgraded form is going to give him an additional range on this attack. The drawback, though, is that this is tied to kind of the same range as his basic attack. And I kind of feel like, you know, if he's that close, he's going to use one of his more powerful abilities. Uh, his buff ability, Purple Dragon Protection, is going to give Critical Evasion 30 for 3 turns to allies and AoE Resistance 15 for 3 turns to allies. Very powerful. I feel like, though, I would rather have him use his ability, Purple Dragon Shield, which gives him a 50% damage taken barrier um, for 3 turns and, or for 3 times, sorry, and Pierce Attack 25 when it's fully upgraded. I think I would rather have him use that, but there may be a situation where you know, since critical hit rate is so dominant on JP right now, maybe this is a situation where he's just going to be needed to lower the crit rate of your opponents. Uh, Continuous Cutting is a two-hit attack with a 25% chance to inflict stun, which is amazing. Again, remember, units don't have stun resistance, so you are going to actually have a very good chance of landing this. And look at the hitbox on this. It is a 5x2 square in front of the user. Very unique ability, very wide range, and I am very excited to use this. I love my fucking Dragoons all the way, you guys, all the way. Now, Purple Long Flying Gun, as it's called here through the translation, is a jump ability, and it does decrease... Uh, resistance uh, or pierce resistance by 25%. You can see here, there is no real difference here between um, the first and the second one, which is why I do think the upgraded form with your passive set is going to be a tracking feature since it is a jump ability. Of course, this is your bread and butter attack. And then finally we have let, <laughs> let me must be in the red, which I have no idea, no idea what this is a reference to, but it is 100% hit, 200% modifier, 25x lightning killer spear attack on the opponent now what about sub job breaking resistance to gun burst is going to be a 165 percent modifier um probably powerful attack right because it's going to be a cross shape modifier pretty high range pretty good range height and aoe height and it's going to decrease earth resistance 30 percent i bet you this would be his go-to attack and i bet you his ai would prioritize this now, he does also get Purple Dragon, which increases move and jump plus one. His sub Viking, nothing really great here. Of course, you know, you can always get excited for the slash abilities, right? So having access to launch, having access to killer axe, you know, with his critical hit rate build, this is like a 50% chance for Tomahawk to crit without any other crit built in. So, I mean, of course, you can always be excited for Earth Slashing. Uh, same with Nightblade and running Sub Nightblade. But again, though, what are you really getting from these? Sub Nightblade does give you some good missile and pierce resistance. Also gives you a uh, defense penetration buff. But that defense penetration comes with a slash attack buff on it. So it's kind of 
you know, like, oh. In terms of his limit break, his limit break is going to be a large cross-shaped range height two AOE height one attack, which is gonna decrease all elemental resistance 20% for three turns to target. Now, I really think that Oberon is going to be one of the best PVE units because of the fact that he has access to decreasing all elemental resistance in his LB, decreasing earth resistance in his kit, and also decreasing uh, pierce resistance from your opponent as well with his jump kit. So if you are taking him in any type of content PVE, whether it's a raid, whether it's a Trials of Reckoning, he is going to be able to do something that will contribute and help in your party. And not only that, he does have a two hit attack, right? That does have stun. I mean, he's gonna be amazing. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's going to be a game changer. He will absolutely change the game. And I absolutely think this is a positive direction for units and TMRs to take their kit. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you do want to support me, you can use my affiliate link. If you are not buying coins right now, if you're just buying anything from Amazon, just type in dig.gs slash coins before you check out. Go to that checkout box and check out after that. You don't have to buy a coin for my affiliate link to work. Again, just go to dig.gs slash coins and check out from there. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a great rest of your day.